Welcome to the session from Uyuni to Azusa Manager, how we work in a community to build a Linux manager you love. Before we get into it, let's first take a moment to introduce ourselves. My name is Alexander Gaul, I'm an open source enthusiast and I joined Zuse five years ago to work on open source software. I'm a software engineer and I work on Uyuni and Zuse Manager as the main part of my job. And I'm not at a computer, I like to travel, especially for food and go outside, go hiking, go running, and just be in nature. With me today is Julio, who will now introduce himself. Thank you, Alex. Hello, my name is Julio Gonzalez. I'm an open source enthusiast, enthusiast as well, and I'm working for SUSE for already six years. Initially, I joined as the release engineer for SUSE Manager and Uyuni. Now I am an engineering manager. And when I'm not in front of the computer for work, I sometimes still work with the computer for other things, such as Internet of Things or automation or helping with packaging for other projects. And other than that, I like hiking. And in my case, I also like cooking. Great. Thanks, Julio. Now that you know the two of us, let's take a look and take a step back and remember, remind ourselves of what Uyuni actually is. And for that, we took a look at the project website and we found a very good elevator pitch. And it says, Uyuni is a configuration and infrastructure management tool that saves you time and headaches when you have to manage and update tens, hundreds, or even thousands of machines. So that sounds really great, but also kind of abstract. What are the features that enable this. And one of the big ones is automated patch and package management that you can use uh, Uniform. It's also a single tool for automated deployment, and it allows to manage clients with different operating systems, um, although they all have to be Linux distributions. But they can come from different family, like the Debian base family, and then Red Hat, and SUSE, and we, we can manage all of them. And you hear this and you think, wait, oh, this uh, configuration and infrastructure management tool, isn't that also, isn't that another project that does a similar thing? And you might be, you will be right because Uyuni was not created from scratch as Uyuni. It's a continuation of the Spacewalk project. And it started as a fork of Spacewalk and added salt, salt stack on top for having a bit different and um, a, a communication, a, mechanism and also configuration management system. Um, and this also doesn't sound very unique, does it? I mean, there is also a product from SUSE called SUSE Manager that can also be described with, this, with everything I just said about Uyuni. So let's take a look at the relationship between Uyuni and SUSE Manager. And it's quite simple. Uyuni is the upstream project for the manager. So being an upstream project means, okay, it's fairly similar because of course the manager as a downstream project is based on it, but there must be some differences, right? And the first one is the manager is a product by Zuse, supported by Zuse, and you can buy support for it, while a uni is community supported. It's community supported doesn't mean no support. It just means you can't, you don't pay someone to ensure that all the problems you have will be solved in a timely manner like you do with SUSE Manager. We from SUSE Engineering are still part of this community and we still support people in the community and we're not the only ones. There are also other people in the community, the users and, and, and just people that maybe also contribute to it that help others out when they run into problems with Uyuni. Um, Another thing that's fairly similar between Uyuni and the Mencha is the operating system it runs on. On the one hand, it's open SUSE Leap for Uyuni and SUSE Linux Enterprise for SUSE Manager, and those are different operating systems. But since the closing the Leap Gap project that finalized with uh, Leap 1503, uh, a lot of what we now take from the operating system for Uyuni, respectively SUSE Manager, is the very, very same compiled package, uh, software and put in the same package that is shipped into SUSE, OpenSUSE Leap and also SUSE Linux Enterprise. So in the end, yes, different, different operating system, yes, 
but most of what we use is actually the very, very same bits that we use in either case. We have a different release model and a different release cadence. So a uni is a rolling release and we try to have a release out every month. And some months we don't make it and we have to push it into the next one or we skip it or from the beginning because we know we can't uh, have a release in that month, but we never have like two uh, or more releases in the same month. So the manager, as you know, has a different release cadence um, and has these versions that in the past were released every year. And then, so the last one was released a year ago, for example, the one we fought two years ago. When, so, but these are all things, okay, this is a difference between your unions as a manager, but if you use the tools, you don't really feel this difference, do you? And you don't, but there are a few things that you do feel a difference in. So first of all, the product import. We have this wizard in the manager and then uh, uni, we also include it, but normally you use the CLI tool to import products. And okay, you have to switch from web UI to the CLI. That's not so nice. But remember, this is only something you do when you set up a uni or when you add a new product. So for example, you would want to um, manage clients that have a new operating system that wasn't supported previously or wasn't out previously. Um, so uh, then, then you would use the CLI tool again to, to import the new products, but that's something you rarely do. It's not something for a day-to-day -day basis at least. But on the day-to-day -day basis, you will notice a different feature difference. And that is translations. All translations that we have available are enabled by support in, uh, by default in Reunion. Uh, in the manager, that's not the case. There we only have selected um, translations, which are then also included in Reunion, but Reunion has more of them. And if you as a user want to improve them, you can also do that. So these are the, the, the main difference between a uni and as a manager. I also already hinted at the rolling release and the difference in like release frequency and so on. So let's take a closer look at the development model of a uni. And as I already said, it's a rolling release model. So what does it actually mean? It's quite simple. We have one release and only one release at a given time. So all new work goes into the next release and the next release replaces the previous release. This is not the case for the manager, of course. In the manager, you have the Fallout 2 version and the Fallout 3 version, and they're both supported at the same time and they both receive updates at the same time. So you can stay on Fallout 2 for a while until its, uh, it, its life cycle ends, and then you have to move to a newer version. In your uni, you always have to move to the new version. There's one exception to this always, uh, uh, well, so there's one exception to this. You have to wait until the next version is ready to, to get um, fixes. And that's when they're really, really bad bugs. Uh, for example, security bugs are just bugs that for example, stop a uni from starting in the first place. Then we will release a patch and that patch version will then replace the unpatched version. It's still only one supported. So you have to install a patch to be in on the latest state but you don't have to wait the full month or more to have the new version out for like you would have to do with all other bug fixes. You know, you can... And this model, um, this rolling release model might sound familiar to you if you have heard of OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. And if you know SUSE Links Enterprise and how it's built and its relation to Tumbleweed, um, then you can also map this to a union to the manager. It's a very similar approach that we take um, and it, from, from the one or as the one that's taken by the Zuzu Links Enterprise team. Oyuni is of course developed and built in the open and we will share the platforms and how you can contact us in just a minute. And one aspect of this is that we also have this upstream first policy in Zuzu. And that means that new features land upstream and upstream project before we put them in downstream project. And for you as users, that would mean that in a uni, you can have features um, before you have them in the manager. Maybe they're not completely done yet, 
because we develop them incrementally, but you will see at least what's ahead of uh, for the Nexus Adventure version and you can already use it. So sounds great. You want to participate, how can you reach out to us? We have a few different paths of reaching out to us for different purposes. First, we have real-time chat. Real-time chat in Gitter, we have the links to the chat rooms on our project web page. There are two uh, channels or chat rooms we have, devil and users. The devil chat room is for active development questions. You can ask us for tips on how to implement something. You can ask us if this is a better idea or that is a better idea. You can ask us for reviews, but not only us, of course, but everyone who is in there and who wants to contribute and be part of the development. So you can just come and, and help out there if you want. Similarly, we have the users chat room, which is also for users to just share experiences, help each other out, share cool things they did, or just ask on how did you solve this problem that I have? Or has anyone seen this part, this weird thing? The development chat is uh, the devil is also what we use for Google Summer of Code, a cool project where students, and these days not only university students, can work on open source software for a number of weeks and they are paid for by Google. And we participated in this project uh, and a program in the last few years. And it's always a, a great thing. So this is also part of our, our uni community working with university students who participate in Google Summer of Code. And if you if you don't if you have heard about Gitter and um, and its final integration into Matrix earlier this year, you could also you don't have to visit the links that we show. You can also use your preferred Matrix client if you have one to connect to our chat and use that instead of the web-based uh, chat client that we link on our project page. But that's all for real time, where you think, okay, you're getting an answer quickly, you don't have to wait that much, and conversations are scroll off and it's hard to go back to that. For long form text and longer, also asynchronous discuss discussions where you have, are expected to to wait a few days, maybe or a day, or, and then maybe get an answer, a second answer a few days later. We have GitHub discussions. So these are this is the discussions tab on GitHub in the OUNI repository, the main repository. And this can be used for whatever you want. We can have polls, you have ideas, you can just say, okay, should we do this, should we do that? And just a place. It's very nice to have conversations there because you can have threads and you can upvote comments and so on. So really convenient to have this kind of forum um, connected to the code. We used to have a mailing list for that. It doesn't work anymore. We removed it. We want to focus on one, one way and that's GitHub discussions for us. Talking about mailing list though, there's a one mailing list we still keep and that's the announcement mailing list. On this mailing list, you will be informed about the new releases, important patches that I mentioned earlier, if you have to install them with out of schedule, basically, or when it comes to meetings that we have, or conferences we attend, all these kind of information we announce on the mailing list, as well as on Twitter. So on Twitter, that's at OUNI project. And speaking of events, or meetings, there is this monthly event that we hold. It's called OUNI Community Hours, and it's on the last Friday of each month at 4 p.m. CET or CEST, so Central European Time or Summertime, depending on the season. And here, anyone in the community can get a slot and present what they want, and as long as it relates to OUNI. So this includes presentation of latest features that were added by us from SUSE Engineering, or others if they contributed. Um, it can also be, uh, and at the end of these uh, sessions, we also have Q&A uh, sections, where you can just come in direct contact, ask your questions about whatever was presented, but also just in general about OUNI and the development or the using, using of it. And this, and when it comes to developing and, and development topics, it doesn't have to be a UNI change itself. 
So for example, we had an external contributor um, recently who created an Ansible collection for managing a uni as the manager itself and the installation of it using Ansible. And here, Christian Stankovich presented that his work in an Uyuni community hour and got a lot of feedback from others who also liked it, what he did and I think started using it or, and contributed to it. So this is not only a platform for us working at SUSE to talk about Uyuni, but for anyone who does something with it and wants to share it. Okay, so, so doing things with that. Okay, that you're hooked now. So how do you do it? Where do you go? Quite simple, our source code is maintained with Git as our almost all projects these days, and it's hosted on GitHub. We have a few repositories in our uni project organization, but only a few of them matter to you if you want to get started with contributing. So we have this main code base, of course, that's where most of the code is. It's a bit complex, but still you can find a way around. Or of course, you can ask if you need um, help on, on finding where parts and components live in this repository. And that's the OUNI pro, uh, repository, also the one that contains the discussions I just mentioned a moment ago. Documentation for user documentation for OUNI is in a separate repository. That one is called OUNI-docs and it's a, it's a, it's a ADOC um, source code of the documentation you can see online. And we will have a walkthrough of changes to that later by Julio. The project website itself is also maintained in Git. And this is something where you can also very easily start if you want to contribute. And for example, if you have ideas on how to improve it, you like web development, you just think, okay, this is a bit ugly or maybe a bit outdated. Hey, just send a pull request and we probably accept it. In fact, this was how I did my very first contribution to uni, even before I started working on the project. I saw something on the website. I thought, well, this looks weird or wrong. I don't remember exactly what it was. It's a few years ago now, but then I sent a pull request, was accepted and live a little bit later. That's great. So already mentioned pull request, standard workflow on GitHub, fork it, do your changes, pull request. You get a review. In most cases, at least for the main repository, you get it automatically assigned um, and a group that is, and then someone will review it, merge it, or come back with feedback and ask for changes. And that's for source code. But source code is not all of it, right? We need to develop to deliver the, or uni this program to the installation, to the server where it runs. And we do that with packages and with, with everything in OpenSUSE and based on OpenSUSE, as we had before, or uni is installed on OpenSUSE Leap, we use OpenSUSE's open build servers. So here on buildopensuse.org, you will have a project that's called systems management uni master. And that's where we, where we keep all the packages that are then built, compiled, and then later from there put into the repository where you can download it as an update. Open build service is not based on Git. So it doesn't use this GitHub pull request like style, but it's very similar. It's called submit request. It works very, very similar, and you can have the workflow from, from the web UI. And that's probably uh, intuitive enough for most to understand. But the good thing is you don't have to know how to use Git, at least not on the command line, um, or the open build service for all the things you can contribute. And we now have an example walkthrough by Julio where he shows you how you can just use the GitHub UI to do the changes and have them included into the project's um, documentation in this case. So, Julio, over to you. Thank you, Alex. Before we start with this demonstration, please, for those of you that are already familiar with GitHub, keep in mind that I'm not using the right repository on purpose because the fix that I'm going to show you how to do was already done 
by our product manager, Donald Bosburg. So as Alex mentioned, one way of contributing to Uni without even knowing anything about Git or command line tools or knowing even anything about Java or Python or any programming language is contributing to the, to the documentation. Well, in this case, what I, what I notice in my example as an engineering manager is that on the step three of the upgrade guide for the Uyuni server, we tell the users that they should update the packages by using the command zipper up. That is the current way of doing it in Uyuni. But since some users are using SUSE manager as well, it could be that some of them by mistake thought that using zipper batch, which is what SUSE manager requires, maybe they think that this will work on Uyuni as well. And in fact, it can cause some problems. So here the idea is that we should have a note or a warning telling our users that things are specifically done to work with zipper up in Uyuni. Now, if you have a look at the URL bar on top, you will see that in the red square, I highlighted this part of the URL, installation and upgrade slash server minor upgrade Uyuni HTML. That is important because if you take note of it, then at the GitHub repository Uyuni docs that Alex already mentioned, you can find that there is a very similar path to the A doc that you need to modify. In this case, it's inside the modules, installation and upgrade pages, and then server minor upgrade Uyuni A doc. And notice that the file name here is exactly the same, only instead of .html, you are using a doc. Here you will see the document rendered by GitHub. And if you want to change it, you just need to hit the button to edit, which is the pencil. With that, the a doc file is open in edit mode. And as you can see, I can just add my note telling that Uni is different from SUSE manager in this step. and while SUSE Manager uses zipper patch, you should always use zipper app for Uni. And when I'm done with, me, with my changes, I can just click the button to commit the changes. That will open a new form well, where you can specify the commit message. Something short, just to tell the people what is what you fix or what is what you improved. If you want a bigger text, you can add it, but for that, you have the extended description field. Then you can tell GitHub to create a new branch for this commit because you want to start a pull request, with, which is a request. So the engineers, the Uni community can review your changes and then talk about them and eventually merge them. GitHub will already suggest a branch. You can just leave the default value or you can adjust it as needed. But then you can click Propose Changes. And with that, GitHub is going to show you a difference between what is already in the GitHub repository and what is the change you are going to submit. So as you can see below here in green, you can see that you are adding content, content to this file. And if you are happy with the changes, you can just click Create Pull Request. With that, the form to create a pull request is open. The title is just the commit message that you added before. And there are some things you need to tell the reviewers about. First, you have the description, which is just a bigger test in some cases of the changes you are making or some things that the reviewer should keep in mind. And then if you feel that your change should become part not only of Uyuni, but of SUSE Manager 4.3 or SUSE Manager 4.2 as well, you can add the X here between the brackets at the, right, at the right place. And that will tell the team of developers that they will need to port those changes to SUSE Manager 4.2 or 4.3. And finally, you can add some links if you think they are needed, could be to the render of the documentation at the website to show where the problem is, or could be to a GitHub issue that you already created. 
when you are done with this description and all the things, you can click create pull request and that will get the pull request created for you and ready for the community to review it. As you can see here, you have the description and it's telling that you want to change your changes from your branch into the master branch. Unlike the main repository for the uni code, here you will not get an automated uh, reviewer added, but still our documentation team and the engineers and the uni community will be having a look and eventually they will assign themselves. If there is any comment, any suggestion they want to propose to you, they will do it and you will get an email about it and of course a GitHub notification. And you or the reviewers can review the changes themselves by going here to Files Changes. And with that, as soon as the pull request is merged, that means that the next to you version will have your changes. And if you requested backporting them to Susamani 4.3 or 4.2, then the next maintenance updates will have those changes as well. And it's as simple as that. As, that. as you can see, you don't need to know anything about Git itself or use a terminal, command line, or anything like that. And if you want to know more about contributions from the perspective of someone who is not a developer, then Raul Osuna is having a very interesting presentation as well, contributing to Uni as non-developer. And he will show things such as how he could add OpenSUSE lib 15.5 or SLI 15. SUSE Linux Enterprise 15 SP5 support to Uyuni. And of course, that support will end up being part of SUSE Manager 4.3 and 4.2 as well. And with that, we would like to thank you for your attention. And of course, we hope we will see you contributing to Uyuni soon or participating in the community, requesting help or helping other people. In any case, remember that we will be always ready to help you at the GitHub discussions or, of course, in real-time chat at the Gitter channels. Thank you for your attention.